Hello everybody and welcome back to the Japanese inspired picnic bench series. In today's video we're going to take a quick moment to admire my new haircut. Thank you. And in the rest of the video we are going to get refining these joints. Let's get going. So I've still got a little bit of clean up to do on the fluffy surfaces within these joints and also on the shoulder lines. They need a little bit of chiseling. But I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone with their awesome suggestions in the previous video. Because as you probably saw, we had a pretty disgusting experience with this cedar end grain. Now there were two main suggestions that people had with regards to making this process easier. And what's annoying is I knew about these concepts, but in the excitement of cutting out these joints and making this bench, I just completely forgot about them and started hacking into it with the chisel. The two suggestions were, firstly, soak the end grain with denatured alcohol to soften it, then that makes it a lot easier to pair. Secondly, the second suggestion was to lower the angle of the chisel to 17 degrees was the most common suggestion. I think it's something Rob Cosman suggested or something like that, not entirely sure, but Soaking the end grain with denatured alcohol and lowering the chisel angle would have made this process so much easier. But I didn't do it. Now, unfortunately in here, I don't have any denatured alcohol, but I have got methylated spirits, which, oh, that's very zoomed in, isn't it? Um, which shouldn't dye it purple, um, but it should help soften the end grain as well. And as for chisels, I haven't got any that I can pillage and take down to 17 degrees, but what I might do is just end up regrinding these Lee Nilsons down to 25 degrees, because that's what I do the primary bevel as. Regrind it to 25 and not bother putting that 30 degree secondary bevel on, just leave it as is. So although we lack the denatured alcohol and the 17 degree chisel, this is better than what we experienced last week. I have no doubt about it. Oh, one more suggestion that I forgot. The other suggestion was simply cut straight to the line with the saw. And if I'd have known that it would have been such a painful experience with a chisel, this is definitely the route I would have gone for. The only difficulty with that would be on some of these, we're gonna have some curved shoulders. Anyway, let's get making this 25 degree bevel. That's easier. Yes. Give me more. Look at how much better that is. Brilliant.
Right, so all the joinery on the bottom of the table is now fitted and the shoulder lines have closed up very nicely, I'm happy to report. Now, we're going to focus on the top ones now, but there's a slight problem with this in that the direction in which you assemble this bridle joint is not possible. So if I put this on here, you can see that that's the area that's going to be removed and that will obviously be on both sides to account for both cheeks on here. But because of the angle of these coming up into it, it's impossible to drop that in from above. So my way around this is instead to hack out this entire middle section and then effectively bend the legs in so they can get past that bottom shoulder, spring back out and lock into these places and then we'll stick a block in to space it out and pack out that little gap afterwards. So probably doesn't need much more explaining by this point. I'm gonna get this top bit aligned with the rod, scratch on both of the uprights and then square those lines around the back and then use the curves once again to join those two lines up uh, that have been scratched or squared across the top and bottom. Um, let's go for it. Right, so the two sides of the table are 80% there. We've just got to add this long component now to lock everything in place. Now, with regards to this middle support going through, this is going to be a little bit different to the foot and the top in that on the top one, let's say, for example, I wanted this line going up vertically to run all the way through. And on the foot, I wanted that to uh, sort of have priority in the joint. 
However, on this middle one that's going horizontal, I want these lines to be visible. I don't want this to run all the way through because by prioritizing these vertical lines, it would effectively mean I would need to nest this component in from the back, meaning this would have to be some sort of half lap joint and then that would have to be half lap. It would mean cutting out a lot of material from this section here, which is actually gonna have a fair old bit of weight and is fairly crucial. So I wanted this to be some sort of mortise and tenon bridle-esque kind of thing that has a good compressive strength, uh, should resist any racking and just be strong long term. And so I want to keep this as one entire length. And so if I was to prioritize those vertical ones, it would effectively mean I'd have to somehow thread it through these if I was to go for some sort of bridle or mortise and tenon joint and then link it up with there, it just wouldn't be possible. So the plan of action with this is to actually rip this entire component in half along its length and then nest those two halves either side of this in a shallow lap joint in the center here. Not so much that it uh, affects the strength of the middle section, but just enough to kind of lock everything in place. That would mean that this component stays as one long length, albeit, you know, ripped in half, but it'll be stuck back together again either side. And these will be kept as one long length as well, just with little notches cut out either side. And so when machining this, what I probably should have done is kept it at about 50 millimeters thick. This is 45 and this is now 45 as well. So by the time I cut that, it's probably gonna end up as two halves of 20 mil, giving an overall thickness of 40 millimeters. And this being 45, there's gonna be a weird step. So I'm gonna cut that, plane the inside edges, and then once they're nested either side of this, I will then have a little bit in the middle to fill in with another material. I'll just glue in or something like that. Or if the gap looks good, I'll keep it. So yeah, as predicted, they've gone down to about 20 millimeters after going through the thicknesser. So they will be nested either side with a shallow half lap joint thing. And then after that, they're gonna have to be glued in here first, packed out with material in the center in between the two to make them one solid piece again. And then after they're glued to that, that's where they get mortise. So then this tenon could go into that mortise. Then that, can be assembled. Yeah, these bridle joints can slide into the bottom of that leg. That mortise can slide up. God, blimmin' hell, there's a lot going on in this. I think I've got a plan. I think. Yeah. Let me know that took some positioning to get right. I decided to start with the bowed one just to get the more difficult one out of the way. It's actually not too bad. It's about three millimeters out either side, but you can see here that that little point does not quite necessarily line up with this line that I've just scratched in. So like after I got both ends lined up with the rod, I was noting that this point was a bit off center. So I redrew that center mark, realized it was off center and I've done everything to this center line instead. And then what I'll do with this is just blend it in afterwards. So then that point hits the exact center there. This misalignment with the center of the component most likely happens due to the uh, amount of tear out that we had on one of these faces from when it was routing against the grain. It obviously took more clean up on one side with that flexible sanding strip, thus through that little peak out of line with the center, but it should be easily fixable. I think, I hope. Right, so now I'll square those lines around to the other side and lay the rod out in reverse. Right, there you go. That's all the layout done for that middle joinery on both sides of both legs of both sides. 
Oh, blimey, there's a lot of joints that we've got to cut out in the next video. But I just want to extend my thanks to all of you who suggested or gave me suggestions for softening the end grain and lowering the cutting angle of the chisels. You really helped me out today. Thank you so much for that. I wouldn't say cedar is my favorite timber, but it's definitely not my least favorite after that. It shows it shows that it's possible. So thank you very much for the comments on that. Again, if you have any more comments or suggestions of things that you'd like to see me try in this build or other suggestions for the design, I don't know. If you've got any suggestions, chuck them in the comments below and uh, we're gonna end that video there today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one.